What, you coming in? Are you coming in? No? Lily, are you coming in? Come in. Don't just knock the... Oh, you idiot. What are you all doing? Come here. Up. What? Up there, come on. Come on, up. No? No? Lily. They can't even see it anyway. You can see it's a stupid one's tail. Look at you, idiot. Lulu. Out you get, come on, out. All of you out. Out, 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 out. Lily, out, you get out. Get out. Lily, out. Get out. <sighs> Hello everybody. Um, today, I have a couple of videos for you actually, but to this first one, if there wasn't shite all over this lens, hang on one second. I need my lens clear. How did it get so muddy? This has not come outside. That is better. Now you can see me. Alright. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of videos for you today. Um, this first one, though, is going to be dreadlock related. Um, uh, you might know from one of my previous videos called One Massive Congo that I have this huge five dread mega Congo going on the back which I shall show you. Um, this is like a Congo update kind of. I'm going to show you around my Congos and tell you how 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 long the like you know fully formed dreaded section of the Congo is now and then um, in a few months time or in a month time Maybe I'll do it every month, maybe I'll do it once every couple of months. And I will tell you um, the distance that it has grown. So I have my handy dandy measuring tape thing here. Um, and I shall measure the length of the mature formed Congo dread. So we shall get on with that now. So, first one I'll show you is the main one, I guess, that I'm sort of going to be monitoring because this is the big one so we have it I have these five dreadlocks my a bit tacky today because I've just um, just washed it, I've got a new shampoo actually and this stuff is amazing, my hair smells like Turkish Delight, it's like the best thing in the world nah, it actually smells ridiculous um, it's Dr. Bronner's again, but it's um, it's a rose flavored one. So you know, like you get rose flavored um, Turkish delights. It smells just like that, and it smells actually ridiculously good. It's so good. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I had peppermint before that. Peppermint was good, but it makes your the peppermint oils kind of um, gives off your your what's it called like your nerves and stuff makes it feel that they're cold so you get like a cold head and your body gets a bit cold when you're in the shower and stuff but that doesn't matter because it still smells amazing and um, and it's minty which is nice but <clears throat> this one I definitely recommend this Dr. Bronner's Rose um, Liquid Castile Soap whatever you call it um, yeah it's amazing it actually smells ridiculous and it works so well for cleaning dreads and um, keeping them nice and grippy I guess but anyway here's that dread so, this is, that's it there, you've got one, two, three, four, and five. And then down at the base here is this whole section where it is one big dread now. You've got this one, this one here is having a bit of trouble. He's sort of, you know, he's getting in there, but he's not quite, not quite fully, fully dreaded in there. And I think inside here is my... My little ladder one as well, the one with the, the one with the little net between it, which is just that one little dread that goes between them. But then obviously back up here, that's fully formed into that dreadlock now. It's just that one that's having a bit of trouble. So yeah, there's that five, and the distance that it is fully formed as a single dread is. If I can actually. I don't know how to do this properly. So about there. I think that's the furthest point. The furthest point that the 
that the dread is, you know, from the scalp to the furthest fully dreaded point. It's about that far, so let me get it out of there. So there we have seven, around seven centimetres of fully formed dread inside this Mega Congo here, which in inches is just short of three, just short of three inches, <clears throat> if you measure that way. So yeah, that's that one. This is a good seven centimetres, so I'll remember that for next time, and then when I come back to it, I can tell you how much it has grown over a period of time, and then I can give you a time scale of how quick dreads will grow. And um, I might do it as well for a thinner dread, so then we can get a kind of an experiment to see if there's a difference between, you know, like the growth of thin dreads and the growth of fat dreads. Because, you know, obviously, in a fat dread, you've got a bigger surface area for all the hairs to be going into, so uh, you'd kind of think it might grow a little bit slower, maybe, because you've got more area to pack out. Whereas with a thinner dread, such as like, like this tiny one here, like, you can see the thinness between them two now, that's, um, yeah, it's quite a quite big difference. So I would have thought this one would grow a lot quicker. You, well, not a lot quicker, but, you know, a noticeable amount of difference, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I guess we'll see. So yeah, seven centimetres on that one, just short of three inches. And um, another one I wanted to measure was this one at the front here. I can get my fucking hair out of the way. So this one here. This is that one that I started quite a while ago now, and it's grown a lot. Like it's almost under my nose. It's pretty, pretty long now, and um, fully draw, fully dreaded. Um, so yeah, we'll measure that. We'll measure that. So from the base, right at my scalp, up to the furthest dreaded point is pretty big. Um, about eleven and a half. So yeah, about there. About eleven and a half centimetres of fully dreaded Congo three dread mess. Um, yeah, which is eleven and a half in, uh, is four and a half inches. So four and a half inches or eleven and a half centimetres is how long that one is. Um, yeah. Now I need a point. I need a point where I can measure from on a skinnier dread, where I can measure the growth of that one. So uh, let me think of a good dread to use. I guess a good one to be using would be one with something in it, such as this. Uh, no, because that's kind of congruent as well. Okay. Um, I can't think of anyone that would do it. I guess I could use that one, but that's still kind of thick as well, isn't it? Right, I'll have to have a think about that one because I'm not sure if I have any dreads I can use. Because I don't have any beads in, I'll have to put a bead in. Um, tell you what I'll do, I'll get a skinny bead. I'll chuck it in there for you, just so that we can do this experiment. <laughs> find a little skinny bead to put in there. That's what I really have at the moment. I have some more beads um, outside in the workshop, more of these ones that I'm making, if I don't drop them all over the floor. More of these bone ones that I'm making and stuff. I've got um, not much bone left actually, the bone's kind of depleting now. I'm pretty much out of bone. Um, but I have a little supply uh, later on that I will be able to um, get later in the year basically, uh, maybe maybe closer towards sort of Christmas and, uh, and stuff like that so yeah but I'll try and put these are little um, little ear stretches that I made out of bone uh, about five five or six millimeters ear stretches so if I can get this into a dread then I can use that as my measuring one if I even have a thin enough dread now, that's not thin enough. Where's that tiny, tiny one I just had? That's just annoying, isn't it? I've completely lost there, is that one?
Mm-hmm. That's the one. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that on there. Because I've got to get it past this lump, and I don't think I will be able to. Hmm. I used to have a bone. I used used to have a bead in this one. It was a um, it was one of these little soapstones like this one here. But because that because this dread is so skinny, that tiny little bead was just weighing it down so much, and I didn't want it to damage my dread by like you know pulling at the scalp or anything like that. So I ended up pulling it out, and um, and it was quite cool actually because this this end was blunted, and when I pulled the bead off, it must have dislodged a load of hairs or something and made the end all wispy, which was cool because I kind of wanted to have more wispy ends on my dreads but yeah, well I'll yank it through this Hey, got it over the lump perfect, okay, so if I put it to the first point where it sits, I guess which is nowhere I'll put it to the lump then, to the lump so there it is, to the lump we'll measure that and then that will be my dreadlock measuring um, point. And that is at a good 35 and a half centimeters. So just about there, 35 and a half centimeters. That's quite long, isn't it? Pretty long. It's like the distance of the whole screen. Yeah, so that's. um. That's to that bone. And in a month, we will have another recap and see how the growth is. So that's that, guys, anyway. So, yeah, cheers. Thank you very much. Um, I have other videos on dreadlocks and congos and stuff, so you know, check them out if you want to find out how to do congoing, because there's, there's a few different sort of techniques you can do. And I think I've gone over most of them in a few of my videos. But, like... Um, that one with the bead over this side. He is congoed with a plait, as you can see. This whole area here is plaited, and you just kind of knot the. You got the two that come at the end, and then the third one. I just kind of back looped it to knot it up. So yeah, there's that. There's that technique. I think I might have gone over that a couple of times. Um, and then there's the other techniques of you know like passing one through a gap underneath something else or. Um, or there's, you know, like, leaving it for a while, don't separate them, and find out which ones want to Congo, and then, you know, leave them to do their own thing, really, which is exactly what I've done with this five dread Congo at the back. I've literally just, I just hadn't separated for a while, realised they were trying to go together. They were, you know, like, these two had been, these two had been trying, trying to Congo for ages, and all of a sudden it dragged this one in, which also dragged that one in, and then this little one here, he's just sort of, you know, he's just sitting in there trying to trying to join in, but I'm um, not quite getting there, so I'm not sure yet whether I'll um I'll pull him out or something. But yeah, that's that. Um and I think this one here at the front, I think two were congoing and the other one I passed through the middle, and that's how that one became. So so I've done all three and they've all worked, so um yeah. Uh, yeah, check out those videos if you want, or you've probably just got the information from this one now, because I was chatting a lot. Um, yeah, so I think that's kind of it for this one, and I'll come back next time with the revised measurements. Alright guys, see you later, bye.